How can you find the value of an unknown capacitance using a sharing bridge? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question again. How can you find the value of an unknown capacitance using a sharing bridge? Well, let's find out. Well, a sharing bridge is a bridge-like structure that operates on an AC voltage. So first, let us consider an AC voltage source like this. And towards this particular AC voltage source, a bridge-like structure is connected, which is referred to as the sharing bridge. So the bridge would look somewhat like this. So here on the top, it has a particular capacitor and a particular resistor like this. But here on this particular branch, it just has a particular capacitor. But here what we observe is that we provide a variable capacitor over here. And parallel to this particular variable capacitor, we connect a resistor over here like this. And then here we connect a particular resistor. This thus is what you refer to as a sharing bridge. And now here, over here, like this, we now connect a particular AC galvanometer over here. So this is the basic structure of what you refer to as a sharing bridge. So using this particular sharing bridge, we can actually find the value of an unknown capacitance. Here, so let this be C1 and let this C1 be the value of the unknown capacitance that we have to find. And let this resistor be say R1 and let this resistance R1 be also an unknown resistor. So let us imagine that we don't know the value of this particular capacitor C1 and this particular resistor R1. So let this capacitor be say C2, this resistor be say R3 and this capacitor be say C4 and the resistor be R4. As simple as that. So now, as we always do, let us now adjust this particular capacitor. This is a variable capacitor. That is, we can actually change the value of the capacitance of this particular capacitor. So now, let us now change the value of the particular capacitor. And while we change the value of this particular capacitor, we can see some kind of a deflection in this galvanometer. But at a particular value of this particular capacitor, what we observe is that this galvanometer shows no deflection. That means that there is no current that is passing through this particular galvanometer. And in such kind of a scenario, we say that we have achieved a balanced condition. That is the condition that we need, that is a balanced condition. So in the case of a balanced condition, no current flows through this particular galvanometer and therefore the potential difference between these two points is zero. There is no potential difference. That is the potential at this point and the potential at this point are equal. So now let us consider the impedance of this particular combination. That is Z1. So here impedance is defined as the total effective resistance that we get. That is here over here the resistance that we get because of the combined effect of this particular capacitor and this particular resistor. That is what we refer to as the impedance. So here the overall resistive effect because of the presence of this particular resistor and this particular capacitor C1 is given as Z1 is equal to R1 plus 1 by J over 2 omega C1. That is the effective impedance Z1. And now in the case of Z2 here, we don't have a resistor, only a capacitor is there. So therefore, Z2 is equal to 1 by J omega C2. And now here in the case of R3, we only have a resistance R3 and therefore Z3 is equal to R3. But in the case of Z4, we have a capacitance and a resistor that are placed parallel to each other. So therefore Z4 is equal to R4 parallel to this particular impedance of C4. That is R4 parallel to 1 by J omega C4 which is equal to R4 into 1 by J omega C4 divided by R4 plus 1 by J omega C4. So therefore we get this as R4 divided by 
1 plus j omega r4 c4. This is the value of z4. So now we have the value of impedance z1, z2, z3 and z4. That is z1, z2, z3 and z4. And therefore, in the case of a balanced condition, we know the case of a balanced condition which is given as z1 by z2 is equal to z3 by z4. That is z1 by z2 is equal to z3 by z4, which implies that z1 z4 is equal to z2 z3. And now substituting the values of all these over here, we get here z1 is r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 into z4, which is given as r4 divided by 1 plus j omega r4 c4 is equal to z2 is given as 1 by j omega c2 to z3, which is given as r3. And now upon simplifying this, we get j omega r4 c2 minus omega squared r1 r4 c1 c2 is equal to j omega r3 c1 minus omega squared r3 r4 c1 c4. So here these are the imaginary parts and these are the real parts. So now equating the imaginary parts, we get omega r4 c2 is equal to omega r3 c1. So therefore here omega and omega gets cancelled and therefore we get c1 is equal to r4 c2 divided by r3. So this is the value of the unknown capacitance c1. And now on equating the real parts we get omega squared r1 r4 c1 c2 is equal to omega squared r3 r4 c1 c4 here omega squared and omega squared gets cancelled and therefore r1 is equal to r3 r4 c1 c4 divided by r4 c1 c2 so here c1 c1 gets cancelled and r4 r4 gets cancelled therefore r1 is equal to r3 c4 divided by c2 so this is the value of the unknown resistance and this is the value of the unknown capacitance. As simple as that guys. So this does is how you can find the value of the unknown capacitance and also an unknown resistance using a Schering's bridge. As simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can measure the capacitance using a Schering's bridge. And if you found this video informative, do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. I'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.